this project, we're going to make a fall sign. I have this, um, like a wooden sign. It already has the hanger in the back. I thrifted for $2.99. I am just going to start off by painting. It's already black, but I want to cover up this wording, so I'm using ink in the Waverly which is a black color. And I'm just going to go over the entire sign here on the front and get those white words covered up. And I think, I'm thinking about either doing like a chippy technique on this sign or a um, crackle. So, just haven't decided yet, and I also haven't really decided what um, color I want on, you know, the top, the top coat. So, I'm going to just finish getting this coat of paint on, let it dry, and then we'll be ready to go on to our next step. Okay, now that that's dry, I'm just going to, I decided to do a crackle, but before I do that, I'm just going to like randomly splotch on some different colors. So I'm going to go with celery and I'm just going to go here and there in here. Okay. Okay, and we'll do a little bit of orange. This is the pumpkin in the Waverly. Right. Let me just pour me a little bit right here in my plate because I don't want to get green in my container. I know this looks crazy right now, but it will look good when we're done. <laughs> All right, and I want one more color. I think I'm going to do um, this hazelnut color. Here, or should I do... Yeah, I will just do hazelnut. Okay. I'm just going to just put it in random spots. Okay, I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer and then we'll be ready for our next step. All right, now I've just got a sponge brush and Elmer's glue. We're just going to apply a generous amount of Elmer's glue. And I'm just brushing it on with my sponge brush. sure I get the edges good and the thicker your glue the more crackle you will get Okay, so we're going to, we're not going to let it dry, but we're going to let it sit a few minutes and sort of get like a tacky consistency. And then we're going to go with our top coat 
of paint. And our top coat of paint, I am going to go with, um, I think I'm going to go with plaster for my top coat. All right. We are ready. I've got my plaster in a bowl here and I've got my paintbrush. I'm just going to, um, you know, I might need to get, let me get a wider paintbrush. Wider, <laughs> not whiter. Let me grab, yes. Sorry, guys. I think it would be better since this is a larger sign for me to use a wider paintbrush because you don't want to, once you make a swipe, I'm, I don't, I want to try not to go back over that same spot. So when I brush it on, it's like I don't want to work that glue in to my paint. And I'm trying to make long strokes, but before I get to the end, I'm running out of paint. So that's not working out for me. <laughs> so I hope this works out. Let me get some more paint in my bowl here. So now I'm just doing those edges. And my sign is meant to look, you know, just aged like it's just got coats upon coats of paint on it from over the years so that is what i'm trying the look i'm trying to achieve here Okay, let me get this edge here. And I didn't, or did I put glue? I don't remember if I put glue on the very edges, but it's okay if I didn't, because um, I'm still going to um, sand this entire piece once my paint crackles and everything, I'm still going to sand it so that paint will, on the side there, that paint will be exposed and everything. And I'm already starting to see some, oh man, I was trying to go over that again. Okay. I better just leave it alone. So I'm already starting to see some crackle. Are you guys seeing that? Do you see what I see? <laughs> and I just touched this side. Okay, so I'm going to put this over to the side, not touch it, leave it alone. Let it do its, let it do its thing, and then we will be back shortly to see how it looks. Okay, guys, our sign is completely dry, and look at all that crackle, and you can see the orange and the green popping through the crackle. So that's the effect that it does when you just kind of splotch on some different colors and then go with your crackle technique. That's the look you're going to get. So now I'm going to stencil on. I have a stencil here I got from Amazon. It came in a pack with some other stencils. 
and I'm just going to position it onto my sign to make sure it's going to be center and even. And you can take some painter's tape and kind of put down to hold it in place, but I'm just going to um, hold it with my hand. And I've just got a stencil brush here, and I'm going to be using the color ink in the Waverly, which is black. And I've got a plate here. I'm just going to offload my paint so I don't get too much paint and then we'll um, just get this stenciled on and I will probably do two coats of my paint for the stencil. So I'm just checking to make sure that is even. And then I will dab in some places and some places I'll just kind of do a back and forth motion, making sure I hold the sign in place. But when you offload like that, it just, um, it keeps from having too much paint on your brush because you are more likely to have bleeds and smears when you have too much paint on your brush. Okay, now I'm just going over it again with a second coat. <clears throat> and I did decide where the pumpkin is right here. I did the stem black, but I'm going to go with my orange chalk paint in the color pumpkin, and I'm going to stencil over the pumpkin where it will be orange. So I think that'll look really good to have the pumpkin orange. And then I'm going to fix a little bow in the corner um, where all my colors will kind of tie in together with the green and the orange and the white and black, like maybe with the buffalo chick and kind of tie everything in together. So I'm just going to finish this stenciling and then we will reveal our stencil here. All right guys, and here we go. Just gonna raise this up. And there we go. Hang on and I'll turn it around where y'all can see it. I absolutely love how this turned out. I'm so glad I did that pumpkin orange. And I love all those other colors coming through the crackle finish. Let me move that camera a little bit. I've got some shadows going on in here. I don't have the best lighting in my craft room. Let me know what you guys think. I love it. I'm just going to let this finish drying and get that little bow over here in the corner. And this already has a hanger on the back to be hung on the wall. I don't think I'm going to do a jute hanger or anything like that on this piece. I am going to clean up the back of this sign. I'm just going to take some sandpaper and sand and get those paint splotches off just to where the back will look nice. I mean, even though I know you're not going to see it, but I still want it to look nice and, you know, not be all splotchy with, um, with paint everywhere. So I'm going to get this bow and then this project will be complete. All right, guys, I've got my bow made up here. I just had some, um, different colors of ribbon, just tied them, I cut them tied them together with my jute string. I'm just going to kind of position it over here in the corner. I may have to trim up some of those ribbons because I don't want my wording to be covered up. Okay, I think right there would be perfect. Just hold that in place. 
And I also have this teeny tiny pumpkin that came in a set that I ordered from Amazon. And I am going to glue it right in the center. I think that is the cutest. Just right in the center. Whoops. Knocking stuff over over here. Okay. Just position these ribbons. All right, you guys, that is it for our sign. I think it is super cute. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Next up, I have this beautiful print that I thrifted for $4.99 at my local Goodwill. Um, I love this print. I love um, barns, old barns like that, and this just looks very fallish, the scene and everything. So, I'm just going to give this a makeover by redoing the frame. And I'm going to go with the color Hazelnut for my frame. And it's sort of like an orangey. You can see at the bottom where it's not mixed up. It's an orangey tint. So, um, I think orangey brownish antique-ish look. So I'm just going to start with this and then go from there if I want to do any antique wax or anything like that or distressing. So we'll just go ahead and go with our first coat on our frame. So first I'm just going to give it a wipe down with a wet wipe here just to clean it off before we get started with our paints. Okay, I think it's going to take a second wipe down. And just going to put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on my wipe. frame really well. Okay, that took a little longer than I thought <laughs> getting that cleaned off. Okay, so now we're ready to go with our first coat of our hazelnut. And definitely going to need two coats of this. I really like this color. Um, I may have to kind of dry brush on. I may dry brush on cashew because plaster is a little too white for this print. I just don't think plaster would be a good. It's like an off-white color if you're not familiar with Waverly's chalk paint colors. Um, it's an off-white, but compared with this print and the wood tones and, and warm tones in this print, it may be too light in comparison. So, cashew, I may just go with cashew and sort of dry brush that on. And I also think I'm going to distress this frame since it's got this pretty, I love this pretty wood, and it's real wood. These old pictures like this use the real wood, so I'll most likely distress this frame and bring back, you know, some of those natural wood tones back through. Alright, now that our two coats are good and dry with our hazelnut, I'm going to take the color Cashew 
and I'm just going to dry brush this color around the frame. I'm just using a chippy brush to do this method. And I'm just offloading some paint to do this. You don't want a lot of paint on your brush at all. And I'm just kind of brushing that on very lightly. Because you can always go back and add more. And if you do get too much on for your liking, like in one spot, you can um, try to take a dry paper towel and sort of go back over it to see if you can kind of blend it in a little bit better. All right, you guys, I have dry brushed all the way around, even um, on the back side. You can see that frame there. So I'm loving how that looks. And that is just a quick way, if you find those beautiful pictures in the thrift store or your local Goodwill, grab them up because you can change up the frame and give them a whole new look. I absolutely love this, especially for fall. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. For this project, I have this tray I thrifted at my local Goodwill for $2.99. I've already cleaned it up really well, just wiped it off with some um, uh, rubbing alcohol and a wipe. I'm going to start out by, okay, I have the color Cashew in the Waverly and I have the color Celery in the Waverly and I may add a third color. I haven't decided yet. But um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with cashew and just apply a quick coat. And while the paint's still wet, I'm going to um, uh, sort of blot in some of the celery, the green color, and just sort of blend these colors together uh, to make, uh, just sort of like layer some paint on to make a pretty fall color. So, not really sure. Just kind of trying this out and seeing how it goes. Okay, y'all, I decided I went ahead and just did the one coat and I dried it. So now, with the second coat... I'm going to, um, hang on guys, there's something, and let me get that out my paint. Okay, I got that. I had something dried in my paint. Okay, so now I'm going to go on with the second coat of cashew, and while my second coat is still wet, I'm going to come in with some celery, some of the green, and sort of layer that paint. Um, I was thinking I'd go ahead and start layering with that first coat, but, um, I don't want to, you know, do all that work and then not have good coverage and have to go back over it again. So, I want to have good, a good base coat, good coverage with that base coat first. I have been loving that celery color, um, using it for fall. It's really a good color to use because um, I've used it quite a bit this summer. And now getting ready for fall, is I'm loving it, you know, with my fall crafts. 
and you could really get by with it for Christmas too with um, you know like a muted green all right so now I'm going to come in while that cashew is still wet and I'm just going in with this green let me go over that texture I love that texture in this tray that's the main reason why I grabbed it up that day at the thrift store that texture that detail around the rim of it it's like I don't want to work it in too much because you know, I want you to be able to see that green. I am just loving that. And I also decided to just, I would just focus on like the inside of the tray. And then once everything's good and dry on the inside, then I'll, you know, do the outside and you know do the same technique on the outside I'm also going to just blend that in on the bottom of the tray I'm loving how this is looking so far Uh -oh. Tell me what colors you guys are using um, this fall. Of I know I was um, watching something the other day and it was saying how people were kind of uh, staying clear of the traditional orange colors this fall. So, and I, then I saw on another site where they were saying um, that blues were really going to be in this fall. So just curious as to what colors you guys are using this fall. I'm going to, um, I'm going to use some traditional orange, and I'm also I've been one to love blue in my fall decor the past couple of years so I'll probably go with the blue and then I'm going to go with a few different shades of green I usually love green as well for you know the fall colors um, so and then of course like uh, your off whites those are all still safe. Those safe neutral colors. Definitely do those too. This sort of blends everything in together. Alright guys. I think I'm going to leave this alone. I may end up adding just a little more green as it dries. I'm going to just you know, keep my eye out on it. But I'm going to let this dry really well, and then we'll be ready to do the outside of the tray the same way. Okay, guys, our tray is good and dry. Now we are ready to fill it with some pretty fall decor pieces. I have some pool noodles already cut to fit. I'm just going to lay those in there. You can hot glue these in here if you want, but I just choose not to just in case um, the person that purchases this wants to change it out, uh, you know, later for neutral um, decor or like Christmas decor. Okay, I have a piece of cut burlap. I'm just going to lay 
over that to fit and I'm just gonna kind of trim it up on this side okay and if you saw our other tray we did a another tray I think I'm gonna kind of wrap I think I'm gonna kind of wrap my little noodles in my burlap kind of like that and then back over but if you saw um our other tray we did a tray very similar to this that's pretty much what i'm doing i'm just you know getting my booth ready for fall i have a booth um that's local to me where i live and I'm just kind of getting it revamped for fall and just getting, you know, some decor pieces in there. So, um, sometimes I like to do similar pieces in my booth. Um, I rarely do something, you know, identical, but I do like to do similar decor pieces, especially if it's for a certain holiday or a certain season. I like to have, um, you know, similar pieces. Okay, so I'm going. What I'm going to do? I'm going to hot glue like our pumpkins in place. I'm going to do that. Oh, I know what I'm missing. Some moss. Let me grab that. Okay, I got it. And I actually had to run to my local Dollar General earlier and grab. A couple of pool noodles because I was out and I was hoping that they still had some and I was relieved when I pulled up in the parking lot and they had a box of them outside before you even walk in the door and I'll normally just pick those up for a dollar I will not pay more than a dollar they did have some bigger ones for four dollars but I still stuck with the dollar noodles I even grabbed the $4 ones by mistake and realized it when I got in the store and I went back out and switched those out for the dollar, dollar ones. Okay, let me know what you guys use as your filler. Let me know in the comments. I usually just use these pool noodles. Um, Sometimes I will get the floral foam that you get. Sometimes I will get that. But I mainly use those pool noodles. Okay, guys. I'm just kind of playing around with it just to make sure I get it how I want it before I start gluing because I am going to you know, hot glue those pumpkins in place so they won't be falling around. But the good thing is they'll be glued to the burlap and so it can still be easily changed out, you know, for the different seasons and everything. Just put that moss right on there. And I'll probably kind of glue down my greenery as well especially these little pieces i'm putting on this side and i may end up thinning some of it on that side but for the most part i love these trays and i have been loving this color i've been using the celery color and this was blended with the color cashew, and I just love that. I've been wanting to use these little pheasant feathers in my pieces, but I just haven't been completely satisfied with how they end up looking. So I end up pulling them back out. So I was just going to try that again, maybe just on the corners. Maybe that would look. Kind of put them on the corners. Okay. 
Okay, guys. I like that pretty good. For the most part, this tray is complete. Like I said, I'm going to kind of thin out this greenery on this side a little bit. And maybe what I cut out on this side, add to this side. But other than that, this tray of fall goodness is complete. And I'm also going to hot glue these pumpkins down. But I absolutely love this. And I'm going to make sure none of that green pool noodle is visible. So no worries about that. Once I add my more greenery on this side, that will not be visible. That green pool noodle. I love this. I'm going to do those things and get it staged up for pictures and this project is complete. Let me know what you think. I absolutely love these pumpkin colors. So beautiful. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed these crafts that we did together. These thrift flips. If you don't mind, if you did enjoy this video, I hope that you will give me a thumbs up and even share it out with a friend who you think will like it too. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will do that as well. And don't forget to hit that notifications bell where you can personalize your notifications and you don't miss any future videos. Last thing, also hop over to Facebook, check out my page over there, the cutest little thing. Like and follow me there as well, where you can keep up with me there. Also, over on Facebook, I list my upcycled items that are available. They will be listed for sale. I have albums on my page where you can find my products under, and you can contact me through that page to make your purchases. I ship and I can get those items on their way to your front porch. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on our next video.